morning Transpac race fans. This is Dobbs Davis with Seahorse Magazine giving you the final report of our daily analysis show. It's July 30th, 2015 and we're in the 48th edition of the LA to Honolulu Transpac. I'm opening the show now with our uh, familiar tracker but as you can see we're zoomed in here to the uh, final approach in the 100 mile uh, live uh, version of this. Uh, you can see all the tracks of the boats that have finish coming in and it's uh, good news here we only have just a few left out here on the race course um, here is pipe dream pipe dream took that uh, southerly southerly route uh, throughout the the race we were watching them uh, for the last couple of weeks uh, john davison's team on a davidson 50 uh, going 8.7 knots making their final approach into uh, coco head this morning um, and last but certainly not least, uh, Fortissimo, smallest boat in the fleet, a Maurizio Cassuti designed an Italian built uh, sport boat, a Feet 30 it's called, uh, sailed by a Japanese team, Yasoto Fuda uh, and, uh, and four crew. Uh, these guys have been at sea for a long time. They were in the first group to start uh, on Monday, July 13th, so uh, almost 17 days here uh, elapsed since uh, they started the race. Uh, certainly a long, hard road for them, um, but it uh, looks like they're coming in with good speed and uh, should be arriving sometime midday, uh, maybe early afternoon here in Honolulu. So we congratulate them on a job well done. Uh, certainly a long race, but, but after them, uh, that's it. The race is uh, finished. Everybody has, has uh, crossed the finish line, and the focus will uh, shift over toward uh, award ceremonies and, and uh, luau's and so on here in Hawaii. Um, one boat I'm just showing here on the tracker uh, is OEX. They're uh, heading back to the mainland. Um, for some reason, they're still on the on the tracker here. Now, um, uh, I'll bring this up a little bit later in the show on, on the next stage. It's not of the race, but what's going to happen with some of these boats. But in the meantime, let's just look over at weather. Um, the, uh, for these final finishers coming into the islands, the, the trade winds look quite good. Uh, yesterday, in fact, it was uh, really breezy here. Um, doesn't look like it's going to be quite as windy today, but uh, they'll have uh, plenty of pressure uh, here to get into the finish line. So um, nice, strong start. One thing that that's, is striking is look at the size of this lee behind the big island from the trades. And, and one thing that strikes me, too, are the streamlines showing, uh, uh, whipping around the, the uh, size of the big island. Uh, shifted over to, to uh, the south here and up to the north here. So very interesting patterns. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see one other aspect that uh, I was going to show here, and that's uh, this. Uh, besides the weather, which was a big part of the story, this race, I think another big part uh, of the story was uh, was this: is all the trash that was out here. Um, the ocean cleanup people have partnered with Transpac to uh, offer uh, uh, participation in, a, in an ambitious program that they have to uh, help understand the nature of this problem um, in this uh, ambitious uh, program called the Ocean Cleanup. Uh, the part of this is what's called a mega expedition and what's going to happen is boats are going to uh, leave from Honolulu and on their way back to the mainland uh, go across lines of latitude in the North Pacific and just note uh, what they see. Um, it's kind of interesting their, uh, their scheme here, but they have a devised this uh, novel idea, this apparatus, floating apparatus uh, that's kind of V-shaped. Um, I don't know quite the size and scale of this and what they have in mind for, for uh, trying to help with the North Pacific, but uh, this is the idea in principle is that uh, objects can get caught by floating booms in this V-shaped apparatus, uh, collect into a central point, and then be... Uh, be able to be uh, removed. Um, there's some amazing statistics here. Uh, estimate 70 million kilos uh, of of material. Um, so, and this is in the, just in the Pacific. So uh, they think that uh, deployed over 10 years, uh, it can passively remove 42 percent of this. So it's a it's quite an quite an interesting program. Um, and uh, oops, I'll go back. And so I invite uh, all of our listeners or, and, and viewers here to uh, have a look at uh, have a look at this. It's called theoceancleanup.com. Um, 
they will be having uh, boats that will uh, participate in this program. They've got their own trackers um, uh, amongst the participants and uh, I believe it's somewhere else on this website is where they'll where they'll have this so I'll, I'll let you explore that at your leisure but it's it's quite a nice uh, a nice way to help uh, all of us participate in cleaning up the planet. Um, these are our results uh, not quite final but but uh, we're almost there with a few finishers left um, I just want to alert you to one other one other thing here, which was uh, the HPR finishers, the high performance rule is a, is a rating system used to uh, try to rate uh, high performance offshore capable boats. Uh, TP-52s and, and uh, other boats of that type are, are typically uh, rated in, in, in the HPR rule. We did this for Transpac um, <clears throat> and uh, in this Division 2 and Division 4 classes uh, picked out boats that were suitable for the high performance rule. Uh, and these are the results. So they're slightly different than what you might, uh, what you see in the ORR, uh, and that's just the uh, nature of the rating system being a little bit different. Um, but uh, destroyer being on top in, in the HPR class is uh, is actually uh, uh, not completely correct. They they scored on top in corrected time uh, using HPR, but there's a scoring penalty applied here that's bumped them down. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure what they didn't comply with. It may have been an inspection item in the uh, in the sailing instructions uh, that uh, the uh, the protest committee uh, had decided yesterday to to give them some uh, scoring penalty. But um, so I think the awards uh, for HPR one class will go to Patches uh, TP52 from uh, Eduardo Porter Ludwig, um, and then in HPR two, this is these are the Division four competitors that. That uh, were were interested in being scored in HPR. Uh, Hamashi Greg Slingstead J125 uh, did of course very well uh, in this race, and and so they'll end up getting uh, the award with Varuna and Brett Walda second and third respectively. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for uh, for me and the analysis for this year's 2015 uh, Transpac, the 48th edition of this great race. Uh, thanks all for listening and for uh, being loyal followers. I also want to thank those that have sent emails and comments. Um, some uh, clever overlays have been provided with weather on top of the, uh, on top of the trackers. Um, uh, I haven't had the time to analyze that personally. Uh, it's been very, very busy here with, with uh, media duties, but, uh, but I think uh, thanks again for the feedback. It's been great. Uh, as our tools get better, we'll uh, do a better job with, with these analysis and maybe bring in some more elements. But, but again, thanks uh, to everyone for, for your loyalty and for your interest in Transpac. So uh, this is uh, Dobbs Davis from Seahorse Magazine saying so long for now, and we wish everybody happy sailing. Mm -hmm.